I'm Rich. All right, so we have the new Surface Laptop 70 here with the new Snapdragon X Elite chips. Isn't this a sexy babe? First impressions, this laptop feels fast. It's by no means a gaming laptop. It's not being sold as one. It's not being marketed as a gaming machine. I know, I know. But I wanted to see how much I can push this chip and what better way to do it than running a few games on here. Uh, at least the ones that work natively on ARM. Uh, some of the games I tried to run simply couldn't boot up or I got a message saying how this game isn't supported on ARM architecture. So fingers crossed, hopefully we see some more support later. But anyhow, if you didn't know, for the longest x86 chips like Intel and AMD have been king for many modern computers today. While much of the ARM CPUs were saved for mobile devices like phones due to their approach to efficiency and lower power consumption. And back in 2020 when Apple moved away from Intel chips and decided to make their own silicon uh, M series chips like the one we all know love the m1 m2 m3 and now the m4 it basically proved to the world that arm cpus could be very well capable of competing against those high-end cpus and now we're starting to see a huge wave of new arm cpus being released on big laptop manufacturers like lenovo samsung and the microsoft surface which i have right here through synthetic benchmarks the x elite score is right around something around the m3 air and intel's ultra 9 185 cpu but we're gonna have to see how optimization and efficiency will look like in the future the whole arm family could be a phase it could be hype are they a threat? Who knows, but for now, let's see how it does in gaming. So just like always, I have the Surface Laptop connected via USB-C 140 watt output to make sure we're up to speed here, and we're playing with my Razer Death Adder Essential gaming mouse. I haven't used this mouse since I was a freshman in college, which was like years ago, so I decided to bring it back for today. I think it still looks fantastic. The white LEDs glow so nicely, and it's comfortable and cheap. The cable doesn't feel like I'm gonna be dragging around that much and it looks pretty dope. The first game we're gonna jump right into is Baldur's Gate 3. While it may look like an easy game to run, it appears to be potentially very CPU heavy, especially in later parts of the game like Act 3, uh, with resolution set to max at 2496 by 1664, which is resolution on the Surface Laptop 7. I'm surprised the game was able to boot and run decent here. Opening the menu icons and navigating across the inventory was snappy with no lag spikes, but the frame rate was averaging around 26 with a low of 19 and a high of 35. When I was outside, I did feel like scrolling through the map was a little bit slow. Additionally, I was playing around for an hour and I noticed the keyboard base got a little hot to the touch. I think this is probably one of the hardest games I tested out on here. So I pulled out the infrared thermometer and found that around the WASD keys, my laptop was setting around 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. Overall, Baldur's Gate 3 ran on here and I was surprised. Next was Overwatch 2. And despite what some of y'all may say about this game, hey, I still have fun playing it every now and then. It's just not terrible. I mean, I'm still pretty good and the game is decent. You know, I downloaded it fine. There was no extra bugs or hiccups while loading it up. There was some slight stuff and freezes every now and then which you can see here during movements which wasn't pretty I was averaging around solid 31 to 33 frames per second so it was very well doable for me I think with any FPS games above 30 frames per second should be the bare minimum anything below that and not only will it look choppy I think your skills will actually be hindered but yeah overwatch 2 was mainly smooth other than the freezes during intense moments the IPS LED display on the Surface Laptop 7 looks great. I had no trouble viewing it from any angles and the keyboard felt pretty juicy as the travel distance felt deep and responsive. Now we're gonna visit an all-time favorite, GTA 5. We cannot forget about this game, ladies and gentlemen. I swear, regardless of where you live in the world, you probably have heard of the name GTA wherever you are. This game ran the best here out of all the games I tested actually, with frame rates averaging 35 to upper 40 with medium settings and resolution set to max. Even though this game is over a decade old, many people still play it and it does put many machines to work even till this day. Also if you're wondering this is the Snapdragon 12 core X1 E80 100 CPU which is next to the highest performing chip out of the four Snapdragon variants. Bet you didn't know there was some more out there. Utilization has been fine but my RAM is being pushed to close to 13.5 gigs here so thank goodness we have 16 gigs minimum on this laptop unlike you base model MacBooks, which are still selling with eight gigs, <laughs> why? And yeah, the Adreno GPU has up to 7.7 .7 shared GPU memory. So it looks like we're pretty much fine here for both gaming and other creative work. On to Tabs or Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Uh, this is a really cool game. It's a ragdoll physics-based battle sim where players are given a limited amount of in-game money to build an army to defeat the enemy force. I hopped on to sandbox mode, which um, is another game that uses a lot of RAM. I wanted to spawn just a buttload of troops here, all with different weapons and effects to see how much I can push the Surface Laptop here. And it surprisingly ran well, averaging around 40 frames per second here. Towards the end, you could probably see that I was putting so many troops down, just trying to max out this game as much as possible, just trying to push it. And hey, seems like it computed it really well and we're still good. Next is CS2 or Counter-Strike. So I had some mixed opinions on this. 
Um, this game was running smoothly around 38 to 43 frames per second with all settings set to medium, but there was occasional stutters and freezes. I'm not sure why this was the case, but it was to the point where I would actually lose to some people since the game froze. I'm not sure if this has something to do with the drivers or optimization. It's still playable, but I didn't feel like it was as complete or as smooth as I wanted it to be, so yeah. Last but not least is Minecraft, and while we should expect this game to work on almost any device, uh, I had to download the legacy installer to get this working as the main one wasn't able to run it. Nonetheless, I turned all my settings like biome blend and render chunks to the max just to see that it crashed a couple minutes through and this happened multiple times. Surprisingly though, once I turned those settings down to half, I didn't notice any problems after an hour, which was weird. Frame rate was at a solid 50 FPS, which I expected, and the game still looked very beautiful, and there wasn't any hiccups after that. All in all, I am optimistic for the new Snapdragon X Elite chips, but it looks like it's gonna be a while for developers to actually optimize it for the games, and I'm not sure how these will perform later on. I mean, hopefully they get better. Additionally, we're gonna have to wait for creative and work applications to fully and natively work on this, as I'm hearing a bunch of stuff like Adobe Premiere, Mirror or other apps like Telegram and stuff don't work. ARM architecture is still pretty early, so we just gotta sit back and see what happens. But otherwise, to answer the title of this video, is gaming on the Surface Laptop 7 with the Snapdragon chip possible? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if you want me to test any other CPUs or laptops out there. And until next video, guys, this is Rich Me, and I'll see ya then.